Benny, I love you, son, and you need some help. And we're trying to get you some. I know this, aren't you? <laughs> we're doing everything we can to get you to help. I don't want to see you go to prison. You wouldn't need to be home with me, your daddy. You're going to try that? <laughs> Any objections? None. Ms. Martinez, I'm showing you what's entitled Court Admonishments and Defendants Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one? One gram of four grams, that's a third degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement, you were giving up those rights? Yes. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Judge. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? She does. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? She will, she is and she was. Ms. Martinez, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes. Ma Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison. There's a thousand dollar fine. State recommends community supervision. There's restitution of $114 to the Bear County lab for testing. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, Judge. The only um, addition I'd make is that the fine is to be probated. All right, that's correct. State? Uh, yes, that is a deal, Your Honor. Sean, you was entitled waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes. Counsel, are there any such motions? None, Judge. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. State is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of five years. There be a TAP evaluation, 150 hours community service restitution, and a drug court referral. Did you understand um, those were recommendations by the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Mm -hmm. Then to the offense as charged in count one, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence? State all receipts to the one and all attachments. No objections. Ms. Martinez, I'm showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one in attachments and review the same. Yes. All right. After reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Judge. We waive PSA. All right. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? No, just that she's committed to um, doing well and wants to do well on your probation. All right. Do you have any children? Yes, ma'am. I do. How many? Two. What are their ages? 22 and 17. 
And where's your 17 year old? Um, she's at home. Who, who's with, with your son? son? With who? With my son. And there's no other adult in the house? No, with them. All right. When's the last time you were employed? Um, about eight years ago. During He's what? Disabled, Judge. Yeah. All right. What's your disability? I have seizures and nerve damage on my right leg. How often are you using uh, meth and heroin? Um, yeah. Okay, let's let's time. not do that because you're here for meth and heroin. So how often have you been using meth and heroin before you went to the jail? Heroin, I don't use meth. I would use it like here and there. Something this is not a here and there meth use because I've read the police report. I read it's here and there. I so you're getting in a strange car with a guy you don't know, just taking a ride from him. And he just happens to have heroin and you just happen to have meth. I don't know anybody who's not under the influence, who's accepting strange rides from people unless they're children. How old are you? I'm 38. So you're 38. So you're not accepting rides from complete strangers, which is what you told them in the police report that you didn't even know the driver. You were just accepting a ride. Who does that? So. When the police arrested you, how often were you using meth? So why why were you just not honest with me about that? Why are you pretending like you don't have a drug problem? Everybody on this planet has something that they're working through. We all hoped that whatever is not what we want it to be in our life, that we're working to improve that and improve who we are. I mean, you've already pled to a drug case. I've read the police report. So you're not sober. You're using drugs. And in order to become sober, you're going to have to admit that you first have been using drugs and that you have a problem. Otherwise, I can't help you. Otherwise, maybe you should just go to prison. So you just want to go to prison and do your time? No, I think she might have been confused. There was quite a bit of time from the arrest that she was out on bond until today um, and a rearrest on the FTA. I don't think she was confused. I think she is trying to pretend like she doesn't have a drug problem, but ob it's obvious you do. So we're gonna take care of it if you want it taken care of. She does. So uh, counsel, has there been any thing that she's done to support her habit that would um, make her a bad, better candidate for Esperanza court? Because felony drug court, they have a waiting list. Um, I'm not aware of anything. You want to ask her recently? Um, in the past, it's fine. If, if it's something she's done in the past, that's good. I know we spoke to pretrial about um, potential. She, I mean, she talked to pretrial about potential just substance abuse treatment and stuff. Um, well, what I'm saying is there's a certain um, requirements for Esperanza Court. Do you want to speak to her and see if she meets the requirements of Esperanza Court. Um, at this time, I'm not aware of any judge. Okay. All right, this is what the court is gonna do. The court is going to sentence you to five years in the prison, suspended and probated in prison. To, I mean, suspended and probated for five years. There's a thousand dollar fine, probated. There's going to be a referral to the felony drug court. That'll be the first referral. Then it will be Esperanza Court. That will be the second referral. I'm going to want a tap evaluation while in custody. And can that happen before the holidays, Judge? I would um, like to see her out for the holidays. It's not going to happen before the holidays. It's whatever they have available. Uh, they'll do it as quickly as they can. So uh, that TAP evaluation is to take place while in custody. It's to follow TAP recommendations. Judge, is there any way we can um, have an appointment for that? I just would hate since we are granting her probation and saying that she is a candidate to be out 
that she doesn't get to spend the holidays with her family. My my fear for your client, Ms. Martinez, because she's been dishonest to the court, is that she's going to use. And here's the thing, be it heroin, be it meth, that could be the last time she uses. If I could drug test every single day, I would. No. So that'll be top evaluation while in custody. Follow the top recommendations. There should be regular reporting uh, by Zoom or in person. I'm going to want field visits upon release. Uh, and that'll be two times per month. And probation, if you wish to um, make one of those field visits for reporting, that can count for reporting. We're going to do the UA hotline until further notice upon release. 150 hours of community service restitution. 40 of those hours will be waived if you provide the COVID vaccination with booster. The court is not requiring you to do that. But if you do that, that will be waived. Proof of employment or disability within 40 days of release. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no contact. with Gilbert Gonzalez. Uh, probation, is there anything she needs? Your Honor, on the UA hotline, how often would you like her tested? Once a week. And that'll be all. Uh, okay. And then, of course, regular reporting. Johnny. All right. Is there anything else you need from the court in order to be successful, Ms. Martinez? All right. I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? All right. Good luck to you. We can go off the record. I know you want to be out for the holidays. Everybody wants to be out for the holidays. But this is what I can tell you. You're trying to set up your future, right? Mm -hmm. And your children, 17 and 22, you can always celebrate the holidays after the holidays. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I mean, she, I think she knows about Santa Claus and everything. And she knows what Christmas is about. I'm all that there has to be have. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. If you're all that your 17 year old and 22 year old have, you shouldn't be using meth. And you shouldn't be using meth because number one, it's not the right thing to do. And your children are depending on you. And number two, you have uh, health issues where you shouldn't be using that. And let me ask you this question. If you hired me as a babysitter for your 17 year old and 22 year old, just to be there, because sometimes you want an adult in the house, right? To look after them, to make sure everything goes well, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say your attorney recommends me to do that. And you check all of my references, they're great. And your children say, yeah, we like Stephanie. Let her come by whenever you can't be here to make sure everything is running well. And you decide to hire me. And as I'm leaving, I tell you, mm, I probably should let you know. I do gram a meth a day. Would you still want me looking after your 17 and 22 year old? No. That's the position you're in. You are that babysitter <laughs> who's doing great with the children. And then I'm going to hire you. And then you turn around and tell me, I've been using a gram of meth today. That's not good for your children. You understand? Yes. And honestly, I don't know what would happen if I would release you. You may end up using, and that may end up being a bad batch. And you may end up overdosing. Then what kind of holiday would that be for your children? I okay. Understand. All right. Good luck to you. I just want to ask one more time if you'll reconsider. I just think that there was confusion with the time of the offense versus today, um, which has been quite a bit of time, um, to be successful on this probation and to trust in the process. I think that 
giving her the time out and allowing her to decide to do well and show this court that she can do well. Um, and she's willing to do daily UAs. Um, I, I don't think she was trying to be dishonest with this court at all. Mm -hmm. I do think she um, just didn't understand and the difference between then and now. Um, if there's just anything the court can consider, any condition, she'd be happy to meet to be able to spend the holidays with her family. All right, thank you. And I appreciate the argument that you've given counsel, but my ruling stands. Good luck with you. May I make excuse? Yes. This yes. Okay. All right, who's here? I'm Danny Acosta. Oh, ST, can I get your appearance? Good morning, Your Honor. Omar Shastra on behalf of the people, PA 6332. Good morning, Your Honor. Rick Sterling Coleman on behalf of Elijah Bobby Air P43321. Um, Matt Key is on behalf of probation. And Ms. Fallen, can I get your appearance? Carrie Boylan appearing for Suzanne Jenkins, the victim. Okay, so we're here today. We received a motion that you filed. Um Ms. Bolin regarding a motion to revoke defendant's bond. And I did have a chance to review that. It was also reviewed by defense counsel and the prosecutor. Mr. Shajra, can you tell me, did you or your officer in charge do anything with respect to this uh, allegation? That is correct, Judge. We did. Um, Judge, at the prior proceeding when there was a plea in place, uh, I was contacted by the complaining witness's wife, she indicated to me that she received a phone call after the proceedings. Um, we took that number, provided it to the OIC. He cross-referenced that number with the defendant's number uh, to try to figure out whether or not there was a nexus or a connection between the number and the defendant. He indicated to me after his investigation that there was not. And um, counsel, um, uh, Mr. Coleman, I'm sorry. Did yes. you um, have anything you wanted to put on the record with respect to this? I, I do, Judge, and, and this is very different. I am concerned that a civil lawyer with no standing before this court would file a motion to catch to serve me without having, first, I think it's proper, and I have no problem coming before the court, courts, Mr. Barsonary did not do what was alleged to have done. Contact the decedent's wife. He hasn't done it. He, even from the very beginning, he was sympathetic to what happened. He didn't leave the scene. He attempted to, 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 to help out in whatever manner. Having said all that, it is a prosecution that litigates these kinds of matters before the court can make criminal setting. No, I, re I reviewed the court rule and um, the court rule indicates that it's a motion of a party. Of course, we understand in criminal law, the parties aren't necessarily Ms. Jenkins, the party would be the people. Um, the people have indicated, Ms. Bolin and um, Ms. Jenkins, um, that they don't have evidence and they would have the burden in this hearing to show by a preponderance of the evidence that the violation occurred and the prosecutors indicated on record that they do not believe they can meet their burden um, and that the officer assigned to the case has indicated to the contrary that he could find no correlation between these two phone numbers. So I can't have, you know, this is serious. It really is. And Miss Jenkins lost her husband. I mean, that this is not a light matter. There's nothing, in my opinion, more serious at a district court than a case like this. You know, I do exams on serious felonies, but they go downtown and they have their day in court and their trial down there. At a district court level, a civil infraction resulting in death is literally the only time um, that a district court really deals with a case of this nature. So I, I want to impress upon everybody how serious I take this. And I don't um, know what happened, but I know that I'm limited by the court rules on, on who's, who's considered a party. Um, and who is um, 
who has a bears the burden on this and and the burden rests on the people and if the people are not proceeding on a bond violation then there is no bond violation um but I, I, I want to just make the record clear on a few things. We're going to set a sentencing date today. I know that the pre-sentence interview has occurred. So that happened today as well. But I, I don't think the pre-sentencing interview, we're actually going to complete that following this. Okay, so the pre-sentence interview is going to happen today. So we're going to pick a date for sentencing. And we're going to do that now. And I anticipate that Ms. Jenkins, you, as I told you last time, you have a right to be present. You have a, and you can appear in person or on Zoom, whatever you're more comfortable with. And you have a right to make a statement to the court prior to sentencing. And I, and I do think that your thoughts matter. So I encourage you to do that. Um, let's find a date. And Ms. Mullen, I just want to make sure we have some time for this. Hey, Judge, the other thing is, can I just put on the record very briefly? Can you wait until the end and oh, let me handle yes, this? But I do want to. Go ahead. Thank All you. right. No, go ahead, Mr. Coleman. Go ahead. Uh, for purposes of the, of the in future litigation, counsel for the plaintiff, I will not be accepting service. I will not be accepting service on behalf of Mr. Spire. I do not Involve myself in civil litigation. Please don't attempt to serve me. And otherwise, create more of a problem than is necessary. I will not be accepting service for any civil matter regarding what may come before the court on behalf of Mr. Bartlett. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. I'd like to be heard, Your Honor. You can be heard. Go ahead, ma'am. I was a former attorney for Wayne County. I have I represented the prosecutor's office in civil suits. I have the utmost respect for the prosecutor's office, Tim Worthy and Omar in this case. I also was a police officer and an accident reconstructionist. And I have the utmost respect for the officers that were involved in this incident and investigating this crash. But with that said, I have to say that I am extremely disappointed, not only with the charges, and that issue will be addressed at sentencing, but with the police and the prosecutors complete lack of diligence in pursuing the connection between the phone calls that came in to Ms. Jenkins immediately after the last appearance in court. Your Honor, there's no other individual that has a motive to threaten or to keep her mouth shut, bitch, than Elijah Bargeneer. If he didn't make the call himself, he encouraged it, he ratified it, and he condoned it, and he is responsible for it. My client is so afraid. Yeah, we don't need any commentary. Oh, Your no Honor, commentary. I, I understand. No, I filed you, the motion because the prosecutor's office did not. The police department did not even create a threats report. They didn't investigate it. It took me 10 minutes to establish an online public records connection between Mr. Bargeneer and the cell phone that the call came in from. So with that being said, Your Honor, I will remain silent and wait for the sentencing date. And I will address more at sentencing, including asking for the maximum punishment allowed by law. Okay. All right. Listen. I'm going to be clear on this. And I'm talking to Mr. Bargeneer. You want to scoot over a little bit? Who's this behind you in the coat? Who's that? Is that his mother? All right, you're not helping. You're not helping this. Someone died. Cases like this are full of emotion. But someone died because of this. And he's pled responsible to that. Okay? So I have an expectation that everybody in this courtroom is going to be respectful. You don't have to like arguments. You don't have to like what people say, but hold it in because that's what we do in courtrooms. Mr. Bargeneer. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to make this crystal clear to you. Who's behind you? Your mother, your father, and who? Your girlfriend. What's your girlfriend's name? Sorry. What is it? Sorry. I want to make this very clear. 
you were to have no contact. And I'm not saying you did. You're not found guilty, right, of this violation. But I want to be clear to you. This is a court of law and things are going to be handled appropriately. The complaining witness who lost her husband has a right to speak at sentencing. And she has a right to be heard. And she will be heard. And, and nobody should try in any way to interfere with that. Just like you, you have a right to uh, have due process in this court, right? Have I ever treated you unfairly? Have I ever been nasty with you? No, I've treated you with respect, haven't I? And everyone in this courtroom will be treated with respect. And that's how we're moving forward on this case. There will be no contact between the parties, period. And yes, we're gonna and we're going to have a sentencing date of November 20th. No, we haven't. Oh, no. I'm sorry. No. Can we do sooner than that? Maybe the 13th. What's November 13th look like? Yeah, I thought it was actually scheduled for the 13th. That was the notice that we did receive. Oh, you already received a notice. Yeah. You're sentencing on November 13th. Did you as well, Ms. Jenkins? Okay, remember when I was here, I told I told you last time that they'll send out the notice from downstairs. Well, they already sent out the notice. So, okay. Here hey, I am trying hey, to. Judge, do. if I may, I would also like to respond to. Um, no, 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 judge, no, 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 no. Judge, with all due respect, Judge. Miss, I, I need no, to... Mr. Shadra, it's done. We're done. Nobody is making. Listen, everyone got a chance to make a record. You indicated on the record that your officer looked into this phone number and attempted it. You've made your point clear. I'm not going back and forth. We're done. We are done today. Uh, judge, with all due respect, I need to respond to the allegations that were brought against me by the civil attorney. There were no allegations against you, though, Mr. Sh Go ahead. Go. And, and with all due respect to this court, Judge, Ms. Boylan, if it's, it's my, understa my understanding, has indicated that we didn't do our due diligence as it pertains to the alleged bond violation. Judge, immediately after the decedent's wife indicated to me that there was a phone call, I forwarded that email and provided her the number and provided the OIC the number to that. He cross-referenced these numbers to show or indicate whether or not there was a nexus between the defendant and that number. He indicated to me that there was not. And as it pertains to the charges, Judge, that's something that's that's a legislator's issue, Judge. This is a moving violation causing death. That's all that we had. That's all that was had here. And that's all that was charged by our office. So there wasn't any negligence or, as the attorney indicated, that we didn't do our, our due diligence as it pertains to this matter, Judge. These are incidents that we take very seriously. Okay. All right. We're Could all I set. I'll see everyone back. No, I, I cannot. I cannot take any more. I'll see everyone back. I expect, listen, Ms. Jenkins, I'll see you back on the 13th. Mr. Bargenier, I'll see you back on the 13th. There will be no contact between the parties until that date. Do we know what time on November 13th? Because I don't see it. Oh, at 8.30 a.m. in person. You want us here at 8.30? Yeah. And Ms. Jenkins, you are free to appear in person or on Zoom, but you must be here in person, sir. Thank you, Judge. All right. We're all set. Thank, Thank you, you. Judge. Thank you, Judge. Yeah. I'll speak to the victim in the breakout room, please, Your Honor. All right, give us one. Uh, give us one second. This is Miss Dennis. Okay. She's from the advocate from the prosecutor's office. I'm. Yeah, I understand. I'm looking forward to working with. Her. All right, we'll get the three of you in a room together. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. No. <laughs>